All right, so there was a little bit of confusion about derivatives regarding notation and how to actually apply the rules for taking derivatives. Specifically, the power rule will be the most useful one for our purposes. So we're going to talk a little bit about notation and the power rule. Now for derivatives in your math class, let's talk about just plain math for a moment. In math, you probably have seen something like f of x, we have some function of x, maybe it's equal to x squared. And then when you're asked to take a derivative of this, they might give you something like f with a little prime of x equals what? And what this is asking you is find the derivative of a function f, some function, in fact, I think they typically use f because f is the first letter in function to try to make things easy for you. Derivative of function f with respect to some variable, some unknown thing, something that can change in that equation. And in this case, we have with respect to x. x is our unknown variable in this case. So I can take this derivative, I can do f prime of x, take the derivative, is equal to 2x. This is according to the power rule, something we'll go over in a few more minutes. So this is probably the notation that you're used to seeing. You're used to seeing a function, f of x equals some equation, and you're used to seeing f prime of x to represent the derivative of that equation. We're going to change things up a little in physics. The first thing that might confuse you is that we're probably not going to write things f of x. We don't have generic functions, generic f of x functions. We're actually describing physical things that are happening. In particular, we're typically talking about some position x as a function of time. So this function really tells us how position in this case an x position, but it could be any other kind of position that you want, how position changes with time. And if you remember, this was one of the big things that we needed to know about to describe a particle all the way back from chapter 1. So in physics, we need to get used to not thinking about f of x, and start thinking about x of t. They're still describing the same things. We still have some function, some function f, in this case we're going to call it x, and some unknown variable x, in this case we're going to call it t. So let's say we want to take a derivative. We want to take a derivative of some function, let's say x of t is equal to t squared. I want to take a derivative. In, in your math class, you'd probably see something like x prime of t. What is that going to be equal to? x prime of t is going to be equal to 2t. This is again using the power rule which we will go over in a few minutes. In physics we're going to use a slightly different notation. We're going to use the notation for a derivative of x we're going to say dx, derivative of x, with respect to whatever the unknown variable is, in this case dt, derivative with respect to time. And in physics we do this because position is a function of time. When you take the derivative, you get something called velocity, which tells you a change in position divided by a change in time. So we don't just choose this notation for no reason. We choose this notation because it makes physical sense. A velocity tells you how far something goes and how long it takes. That's what a derivative tells you. A derivative tells you a change in an x, a change in a position, divided by a change in time. You can see this in plots. If you think about the lab that you did, you were plotting some position in meters 
as a function of time in seconds. So you can plot that little plot. Maybe it looks something like this. You're plotting your position as a function of time. So here we see our position is increasing. We're getting farther and farther away from, from our origin as time keeps increasing. So it's a direct relationship. And if we look at the slope of this line, if we remember from lab, slope, slope is equal to rise over run. We should remember this from middle and high school. Well, in this case, the rise is the change in x. The run is the change in t. The y-axis is position x. The x-axis is t, time. Well, this delta x over delta t, that's the definition of velocity. V is delta x over delta t. So we see that the slope, which really, really is just the derivative on a position time graph, is the velocity. So we choose the notation that we do. We choose to say velocity is dx dt to be explicit about this slope. It's the change in position over a change in time. This is just a little bit more clear-cut, um, more honest than just saying this, the velocity v is equal to some, some x prime of t. There's still derivatives. These are the exact same thing, just two different ways to talk about it. You can use dx dt, you can use these primes if you're more comfortable with them. Now to the nitty gritty, the practical aspects of taking a derivative. We have this power rule here. Power rule as listed in your book, we have d dt of f. So derivative of some function with respect to some variable t. In this case, we're saying, in your book's case, they say f is equal to t to the n. So if they want it to be really a little bit more clear, they'd say that this function f is a function of a variable t. And in this case, our, our function is t to the n. And we're going to take the derivative of this with respect to time, with respect to t. So t is our unknown variable. And what this rule tells us is that the derivative of some function to a power is equal to bringing this n down in front, which we do, n down in front, and then we take our function t and raise it to the n minus 1 power. So see, we subtract 1 from, from our exponent. We can see this in examples. We can see this in an example. Let's say I have a function f of t is equal to t cubed. So let me, let me use this, let me follow my rules. I'm going to take d dt, the derivative with respect to time, of t cubed. And I'm going to follow my general rules. I see, to take my derivative, I take my n, and I bring it out front. So here, I'm going to take my n, and I'm going to bring it out front. I took my n, and I brought it out front. So when I do that, I'm going to end up with 3. And then I take my, my function, I take my t, and I keep my t in there, and then I take my exponent that I had before, I take my n, so I still have my n, and I subtract off a 1. So it's 3 minus 1. And this is going to give me my final answer of 3t squared. Let's do another example. Let's try x of t is equal to 6 times t to the fourth. Take the derivative of x with respect to the time, with respect to t. So I take my exponent, bring it out front, and I have 4 times 6 I take my function t, raise it up to the fourth power, but I gotta remember, I take it not just to the power, but I subtract off one from that power. So 
So this is going to be 4 minus 1. I can multiply this out. 6 times 4 is 24. I get t to the 4 minus 1 is 3. So I get 24t cubed. And we have one final example to go over. Let's say I have a function x of t. We'll make it a little bit more complicated. Is equal to 2 times t minus 6t cubed plus 2y. And I say find the derivative dx dt, which you could also think of as x prime of t. They're the same thing, just a different way to describe it. So x prime of t, dx dt. Well, first, I know the power rule, so I don't want powers associated with all these, all these variables. So I'm going to do 2t, and there's an understood 1. I'm raising that to the exponent 1, minus my 6t cubed plus 2 times y. So I'm going to follow my rule. I'm going to bring my 1 out front. So I get 1 times my 2. Take my t, raise it to the 1, minus 1 power. I need to remember that I have to subtract 1 from my exponent. Do the same thing. My second part. 6t cubed, I take my 3, take my exponent, bring it out front. I have my 3 times my 6 times my t, and I take my exponent n, which in this case is 3, and subtract 1 off of it. But then how do I handle this, this last part? Plus d dt of 2y. What do I do here? Well, if I look closely at this, I'm taking the derivative of this function 2y with respect to the variable t. So the only thing I care about are the t's that are in this function. Are there any t's in 2y? I don't see any t's here. There are no t's in this function. So as far as this derivative is concerned, the derivative with respect to time, this function is a constant number. And the derivative of a constant is 0, so we don't have to worry about it. And now I can just write this out a little bit better, multiply things together. 2 times 1 is 2. t to the 1 minus 1 is 0. Minus 3 times 6 is 18. t to the 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. And to uh, simplify this just a little bit more, t to the 0 is equal to 1. So that leaves me with just a 2 minus 18t squared. And I got my final derivative dx dt all using nothing but the power rule.